gated amid cheers and celebrations, it was not lost to many that this was not a perfect document, but it was progressive. It established the county government, and it was a promise of a robust Bill of Rights. Chapter 6, though the shortest in the Constitution, captured the leadership and integrity principles. Not to forget the bicameral parliament. Now, Kenyans were upbeat. The good ahead outweighed the bad and the ugly. Nine years on, the push to amend it is stronger more than ever. The Punguza Mzigo bill is making rounds in the counties right now. The reports by the BBI team is just days away. The hits and the misses of the constitution aside, the women have not been allowed to exploit their potential fully. So tonight we look at the state of the nation through the eyes of our women. Later, they reflect on the cartoon of the week and on time bar, back in time, when the Iron Lady did the unfathomable. But first, it's my take. Now, the judiciary remains the center of attention because of the central role it plays in enforcing laws and administration of justice. Now, this is the reason calls for its reform have dominated public discourse for quite some time. For the public, once a judicial system that can, they, they can trust and rely on disputes and enforce sanctions, it is timely and spot on. It spotlights what afflicts the judiciary. On several occasions, the judiciary has been accused of frustrating the war on corruption by delaying cases and often giving warranties to officials who should otherwise be in jails and doing so under the clock of judicial independence. Now, the independence of the judiciary is sacrosanct and non-negotiable. A plant Judiciary is a recipe for chaos. This is the reason the Constitution prioritized the formation of the judiciary to give it the exuberance and confidence to tackle endemic legal challenges and settling the nation. Now, the judiciary must have the teeth to bite and the courage to demolish networks of evil. Nevertheless, there is concern that the judiciary, judicial veil has been used arbitrarily to protect the criminals that those who can get their way through the system are able to manipulate things and escape retribution through their acquiescence, if not overt, overt facilitation by the judiciary itself. Now, this, it is now incumbent on the judicial staff to introspect and determine whether they have used professional cover to defeat the rule of law. Have they lived true to the cardinal principles of justice? Despite the challenges, the judiciary seems to have made some progress, having cut down on five-year-old cases. The onus now is to deal with all other pending cases and dispose them off expeditiously. Now, courts should be, uh, should be a clearing house and not a holding bay. Now, the judiciary must digitize records, expand courts to tackle justice to the grassroots and take it also to the grassroots and fight corruption. And because tonight we're speaking to the ladies, our quote is borrowed from Margaret Thatcher, a British stateswoman who served as a prime minister of the United Kingdom. And it says, any woman who understands the problems of running a home will definitely be near to understanding the problems of running a country. My guest tonight, British Elachi, Rosa Buyu and Ruth Ambogo. My name is Ken Mijungu. Welcome to our program tonight. Join the conversation online. The hashtag, as always, is sidebar at NTV Kenya at Ken Mijungu. Sidebar begins right now. We in Embrace believe there will be a referendum. Lazima ipunguze msiko. Wamama si mzigo, si ni sisi tumapiga kura. Alafu hati mtu anasema punguza mzigo, jipunguze wewe kwanza. Na ikiwa hiyo hatuta ifuata, basi wengine wote wanacheza chakacha bila ngoma. Hey. Ile ambaye tunashida nayo, ni mtu kutumia njia ya mkato, kujaribu kuingia ikulu. Yomana handshake hiko. Of course, welcome ladies to the show tonight. And uh, from the top, I'd like to mention this. Um, you'd 
probably uh, see that we only have one section of uh, the women movement in this country that embrace. We indeed invited Inua Mama faction and they let us down. They disappointed us. They were not able to come to the table and have a healthy discussion with their counterparts here. But all the same, we are going to have a discussion that is worth you well. So stick on cyber. Let's begin the discussion and I want to ask the two ladies. Can, can I say something there? About what? <laughs> I want to say that you don't have to worry because yes. um, in your mama embrace, we are all women and embrace is actually inclusive and fighting for all women or putting the agenda in case for all women. But, Whether but there's a division. So it is okay. There's a division. It's okay that yes. we are here okay. and uh, uh, to represent. we are equal to the task. Okay. To represent women. Mm -hmm. Karibu, but but we, there is we, no division. There is division. There are two uh, factions. It's what we believe in, Ken. But there, there are two factions. No, well, no, from no, my no. end, I think I clearly, from no. a citizen's point of view, from yeah. an ordinary observer, you there agree seems with me. to be yeah. mm -hmm. a divide. There, there seems, seems to there be, is a divide. There is a divide. Mm -hmm. there, there is what Inuamama seems to be pushing politically, yes. and there is Wh what is Embrace what? Uh -huh. seems to be pushing politically. The, uh, in, Inuamama has aligned itself to you know a certain political faction, and Embrace has also aligned itself. Which is very unfortunate, because I'm going yes. to ask you this we question. Have not, first of all, let's start. Yes. We are behind the head of state. Exactly. So if you are behind the head of state, I think uh, you are then in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've but, never seen a country where you then say I don't you will like not to be behind your head of state, you want to be in your own whatever. But I'd no. like to say that behind we are the head not, of state. We're actually not behind the, the head of state just because he's the head of state. Yes. We are behind the head of state because of what he stands for and yeah. the agenda that is putting forward. So you're agreeing with me agenda between the peace, two of you that there is a divide. Agenda of inclusivity, yes. agenda of unity, agenda of equity, you need to show and me that the is why we're I'm going to show you the divide. You see, I'm going to show them the divide. Actually, I, I find this very interesting because I think we are living in interesting political times. Had there not been a handshake, I doubt if Mweshimiwa here would say we are behind the president. If, if there was and no that handshake... Is, if you yes. call me clearly, that is why I've said yes. we are not behind the president because, because he is because the president. He is the president. Yeah. We are behind the president because of what he stands for and because of the agenda he's putting forth to Kenyans. Mm. We know that as women, okay. we are the ones who suffer the most when there is upheaval after elections, for example. So when we find two men coming up to say that we have an agenda for this country so that after any election, Kenyans should not suffer anymore or should not cry anymore. Hey, so you have a man and, and by the way, behind, behind yes, behind yes. That man. <laughs> there's no way women can be boxed into one corner. You are looking for space, yes, and that's what we believe in, mm. and therefore. The formations must be as many as possible. So you agree so there that, are different formations listen, yeah. So that these formations, in the end of the day, who are you speaking? You're speaking about women issues. I am saying when I'm on that decision making seat, and when I'm seated with the men. There is one agenda I'm only carrying. The women, the women. women agenda. And, you see, and therefore, yes. Yes. whoever is on that side and this side, in the end of the day, there is consensus that what we are bringing on the it's table... It's about women. It's about women okay. and the space and we are fighting for. And, 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 I don't, and it's a strategy. And personally, a strategy. and personally, I don't disagree. I always say that if the more the hands in the cookie jar, to push for better governance, to, better. Push, for, to yeah. push for the for the rights of women, to push for the, the enfranchisement of women, the better for us. I mean, look at the history of, of women across the world fighting for their inclusivity or for their rights. For instance, I'll give an example of, of America's uh, fight for the right to, you know, na uh, uh, to suffrage, yeah? Basically, the right to vote. Mm. It took women from various different platforms, women who supported different, I mean, Democrats and, and Republicans, women who are aligned to these different movements came together for the interest of the women in Kenya. And so for me as a citizen sitting on this side of the table, I would want to really understand that, you know, I'd, I'd want to critically analyze between these two movements and, and try to understand that is there really an agenda for the woman yeah. back at the village, you know, okay. that if I listen to what the embraced women are saying and if I listen to what the Inuamama are trying to push for, do I see my rights as a young woman um, uh, catered for? Do or I not? believe that my mother back in the village has her rights and interests catered for that at the end of the day, not just their rights and interests mentioned as, as one of the platforms or rather as something to sugarcoat your agenda when your true intention is to fight for your own, you know, amassing of power. So I just want to understand. Okay. And I hope that this... Uh, you understand Yes, it. and I hope yeah. that... Let, let me begin be right there because yes, I want to understand yes. what are you embracing? Can what are you embracing? Can do you know the meaning of embrace, first of all? If you let me know what you think of embrace, then it would be a good point to start. You from. tell me what you're embracing. Embrace 
in the simplest of meaning yes. means Bring holding, together. bringing together. Okay. Okay. Now we know that after every general election and even after the latest general election, we know that the country was not together. We know about the demonstrations that actually uh, went on for a long time after the general elections. And we also know that even now, there is a great feeling amongst the Kenyan people that probably there is no inclusivity and two main ethnic groups seem to take it all. Yes. So we know that there are those discomforts. Now when we are talking about embrace, we are trying to heal the nation. We are trying to build, bring the nation together. We are trying to say that Kenya is for all of us, regardless of where you come from. Kenya is for all of us, regardless of the gender that you might have. When I hear you, yes. it seems there's an ideology behind embrace. There is an, an ideology. There is an so, ideology. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean? Of course there must be an ideology. And the What's ideology it? is very clear. Yes, tell me. That as women, we would want to see inclusivity and unity in our country. And don't forget, Ken, you've looked at us when we go to our campaigns. You find that we are so antagonistic to each other. And you find that within that campaign, after the electioneering, we'll always have violence, we'll always lose property, we'll always have very divisive politics that bring in now the tribal line. And as women, we are saying, honestly, as we go to 2022, let us try and ensure that this country, first of all, we are back together, regardless of our political divide, mm -hmm. we are able to sit on the table, that I'm able today to sit with Honorable Rosa and talk about issues of women and development of Kisumu, mm -hmm. which at one point, I wouldn't have cared whether Rosa has development in Kisumu or whether Kisumu is, in fact, we had reached a point as a country, we believed we don't need to find others developing. In fact, everything should be of, a, of one side. And I think that is one thing the president came out very clear and the right honorable. And they say, look, and, and, and it's good to be very honest. These are two families that have brought us neck to neck. And for the first time, the sons are saying, look, Kenya, where we've started with our fathers, today we want to rectify this mess. And for me, that is one thing I remember. We kept on praying as women. We would meet and say, Rosa, you know I can't come to Kisumu. If I get to yes. Kisumu, you have no vote. Yeah. You'll exactly. be stoned. Exactly. But you are, you are trying to see, I would want to see her in parliament because I know she brings in a, an inspiration where women will look at her and that development agenda is clear is of it, what she wants is it easy for, for you now to go to Kisumu? absolutely yeah. and walk the space and walk the space okay. and do anything then just tell rosa and, uh -huh. and go to and 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me i would not without appearing as if i am going to downplay the importance of peace inclusivity and unity in this country i would want to really question you see for me my question and my worry is that these two women groups okay, i will let's talk about the group that is currently seated here yes embrace is talking about um, inclusivity and unity and basically trying to prevent the reoccurrence of 2007 and 2013 uh, 2013 2017 divisive politics mm -hmm. but you see my problem is that when women find an opportunity to be able to represent the interests and the concerns of women do they actually identify what the women on the ground consider as their greatest concern or do they piggyback on a bigger agenda let me yeah. answer a big, let me finish promoting a bigger agenda of big two big political players exactly. in, the, in the political field yes or do they actually sit down and find out what do these women on the ground really want because if you ask me right now i always say this that the only way one would be involved in violence as a player in violence uh, i mean as uh, women most of the times get in, involved in violence mostly as victims but the only way that one would be involved in violence as a player is when they are not economically empowered at the moment right now the woman back there in Mashinani the girl back there in in, in Huruma or Kayole right now her greatest concern is that fine I have finished school I don't have a job where do I get employment from there are no employment opportunities for me so what and, do and I you resort think, to and you think so, this is not so, doing so what, that let me finish so what do I resort to I resort to either prostitution or I resort, I resort to you know petty crime for, for the woman back at home her greatest concern is that she doesn't have a source of income so she cannot be able to take her children to school she cannot be able to uh, to afford 
uh, basic medical care for her children. And so as a result, she continues being disenfranchised. So when, when women get platforms like this, when women find a way to, 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 to fight for the agenda of the greater common good of women at platforms such as Building Bridges Initiative, do they actually present what concerns the woman? Or do they piggy? Because let me tell you, the uh, Building Bridges Initiative has its bigger goal. Mm -hmm. But in as much as the what is, women, what, in, what is its bigger unity, goal? And in as much what as is it, its bigger goal? unifying Kenyans and, and preventing, listen, unifying Kenyans and, and, you know, basically pushing cohesion within the country. And for but what my purpose? Concern to is, answer all those things yes, you're coming up with yes. about youth not being employed, about da 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 da, all those mm. can only be achieved if the bigger goal that you're talking about, BBI, is, is actually achieved. But you see, the thing is, cohesion, at what point does Kenya fight? We only fight during, and elections. I'll be honest, we only fight during elections. And for how long? For If it goes for so long, like 2007, for about three, four months, that's the longest we've ever fought because of elections. So when we finish fighting about elections, trust me, Kenyans usually for some reason, and I think they, we have a God-given gift of just forget. finding our way together, but, back okay. together. Ken, so Ken, what yeah. happens to these concerns okay. that will continue to be their think, okay, First of all, yes, let me just say that. This. Yes. Ruth, the absence of war does not mean the peace. presence of peace. Okay? And we are not talking about just the physical fight. The physical fight happened after elections. Okay? But even now, are we cohesive? And that is why I started by saying that there's a great feeling amongst Kenyans that there is no inclusivity. That two ethnic groups seem to have taken it all after elections. And because of that, people cannot be cohesive, people cannot be as productive as they'd like to be, people cannot be peaceful, but we can pretend that we are peaceful, which is just a facade, okay? So that is what we are saying, that it's just not because of what happened, the demonstrations that happened last year. It is also because of what we're experiencing now. And this is not conducive to development for both men and women of this country. And that's why we're saying embrace. I'd like to tell you this, the inception of embrace in April you're talking about those young girls. You're talking about the Uruma women. You're talking about the women in Kisumu. Embrace brought together almost 300 women from all walks of life. You should not look at Embrace as a political and a movement. Yes. 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 I yes. gave you a chance. Because yes. Yes. As, yes. A, a movement of listen. just political women or women members of parliament or whatever you want to call it. Embrace brought women, brought women together. We took the initiative, but we brought women together from all walks of lives. We had young, young women and the head is spearheaded by the president now, Anne, I think she's called Anne, the president of the university. I saw that, yes. She's young, yes, I and saw she that. was present. Yes. We brought women from all walks of life, the rural women. We brought Maindeleo Yawanawake. Who is Maindeleo Yawanawake? No, 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 no. I'll but, give you a chance. You but, but Ross, the question <laughs> is, what are you doing with your I've not finished my drink. Let me continue. <laughs> <laughs> The question is what you're doing with the platform. Yes, yes. 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 I will come in. Come you know, come 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 what, what are we doing? Are, 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 are you piggybacking on non, that platform? On a big agenda on yes. the yes. specific yes. agenda for yes. the yes. women. Yes. yes. It is a specific agenda for women. Everything we do is for women. When we talk about food and security, who is most affected when there is no food in the house. Isn't it the woman? Yes. Who goes out looking after? Don't you know that we already spearheaded and we have a program running with uh, Jomo Kenyatta University just on food and security? At it's Embrace? Not, as Embrace. Okay. You okay. guys, okay. you'd okay. better know things that are happening <laughs> in the country. Yeah, yes. No, no. I mean, back, 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 no, no, no. Back to your question. Yes. 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 I think Let's the most the important answer. thing yes. is that, uh, first of all, look at the membership of Embrace. Mm. Let's start from there. The membership of Embrace carries in Maendeleo Wanoake, carries in FIDA, carries in crew, carries in the, the, the women teachers, it carries in AMWIC, all professionals, the women uh, doctors. Why? So that when we meet, and I know Ruth was in one of our first, first meetings. I she, was more. She, she saw the whole, don't, I was don't run away from Intercon. <laughs> give so, me photos, give the, me photos. No, 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 ah, I don't need evidence. evidence. I don't need evidence. I don't need evidence. We'll take it to court. <laughs> but, <laughs> What I'm saying is it carries in young women. And the most important thing is that each of us will go back with an agenda that we can. But don't forget, Honorable Rosa and others are also women elected in their counties. Mm. And therefore, when you're going to the county, you are going also with your program, a program that you carry. And you know, it is an economic empowerment program. And we've always done. We are going to Kilifi on Friday. You'll see. The program is clear that when we come in, we are not just coming and talking. We are first ensuring you understand why we are there. 
And why we are there, we are saying, if it is, for example, in Kilif, you know very well it is a strong ODM zone. Let okay. us be honest. That time when Jubilee we were campaigning there, it was so difficult for people to understand why, what is Jubilee doing here? After all, you are the ones who have taken our land. You are the ones. Who, but today we are going back and saying, look, we know we have concerns, we have issues. And we know this handshake cannot just remain at Harambe House. Mm. It has to devolve. And the devolvement of that handshake, it doesn't mean it will be the president and the right honorable to take it. It mm. is now the women and any other person who believes. I can go back to Kilifi and say, look, we have issues of land and we need to see government come here, resolve issues of land, bring your title deeds because you are a Kenyan like any other Kenyan. And, okay. and did, did you know, get an answer yeah, from that? Just to give you I, confidence, yes, yes. just to give you some confidence because I think your question is very valid. And you are here asking it, but a lot of Kenyan women and Kenyan people are asking the same question. I'd like to tell you that when Embrace, for example, goes to make a presentation to the BBI, when they make contributions, towards what they would like to see as governing <coughs> Kenya in, t in terms of the laws that govern Kenya. When they talk about opportunities for women, those opportunities will be for women across the ages and across the social divide. For example, when Embrace is talking about, can we have 50-50% can we have, uh, 50, 50 in terms of appointive positions for all areas? national government and county government. It goes right down to the village. Mm. You know that the constitution actually allows for village, uh, village councils in the county government. In the village councils, when people will be appointed into that council, 50% will be ma women, 50% will be men. You will not find Rosa Buyu coming from the national government or coming from an MP to go and sit in the, as a member of the village council. It will be the women at the grassroots. So when we lay down this, when we put up these proposals, it is for women across all the social divides, okay. including the women at the grassroots. And I know you are not answered sufficiently, but I'm she coming is, back. I can she, see she's not answered no, no, sufficiently. No, 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 no. She still has a question. <laughs> I'd like to take a short break just for one minute. Yeah. When we come back, I'd as like to we begin. take the drink. Yes, please. you take the drink on okay. sidebar. <laughs> when we come back, I'll begin with you, your question, because it's a supplementary question. And I still need to ask about just what they are embracing. Because the argument from the other side, and I'll bring it here, yes. is that there is calm, there's peace. You know, the what peace are you spreading? Is not what are you spreading peace. around there the country? Is, that's a I know, I know you have said that, there but I'm coming no back. There is no peace. There's no. There's no <laughs> when peace. When resources calm. are not equal. There's no peace. That's when, when Rosa yeah. will tell you. No. Yeah. When <laughs> I'm hungry, when I'm hungry, you cannot tell me I'm peaceful. I know. You're I'm just you're pretending that's because there's nothing said. I can do. But I'm hungry, and okay. I want you to solve my hunger. All right, Rosa, we're coming back. Let's and take a break on sidebar, but we're coming back with the all ladies panel tonight. Stay with us. Nation FM, more music, less talk. Nation FM, Nation FM, more music, less talk. My name is Joyce Njogu. I'm the head of consulting at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. It's a business membership organization for manufacturing value-add industries with close to a thousand members. From Daily Nation, we've been able to build our brand as CAM. We've been able to build the credibility of CAM because the more you communicate through the Daily Nation, the more we have partners wanting to engage with us and be part of the development agenda. Our leadership isn't challenged, and that's the truth. Daily Nation. The truth. I think they finally found out where all Follow is. them. It's important that I discover where they are because my son can never be arrested. Hello? I'm begging you. 
Help! Eva, where are you? We're here in San Gabriel, right by the coast. Stella, my daughter's life is in terrible danger. I have to find her right now. Well, you don't have to anymore. Because you're going to die right before she does! <laughs> Eno! Eno! Let's go home. Eno! I'm sorry. Now, you can get your Uber ride with a phone call. Call 0800-722-000 to ride. When the spirit of Kenya got going that magical day, it never looked back. And now, the same spirit is ready to take Kenya to the next level, led proudly by a new generation. Kenya King, Shangilia, Hasolia Kenya. But, but you guys are using the money from the government. Yeah. You're using the money from the national government. And welcome back. We are on air, by the way. Yeah. For, embra for embrace. Oh, yeah. No, you're being funded. You even use money from uh, the National Gender and, and Equality and, and, Commission. Ah, that around. is okay because you are taking it to the... In fact, we are helping them no, to ensure the money goes. But that is goes. also not okay because we've never Aye. used... You look at the budget of National Gender and Equality. Well, and National Gender and Equality stands for everybody. Uh -huh. Women, So you don't use those funds oh, to move around? Oh, not at all. Not even a drop, imagine. All right, National let's go back to your right? question. Let's right. go back to Ruth's question. Do they even question. have the funding? <laughs> let's go back so to So I, I think they are given 300 million by Gava. Will they be able even to... It's not enough to... Finance your former efforts running around the county. But, no, no, no. And is funded but, by feed. But national but gender. Is, but it's a very small way. Women yeah. know how to. No, use not only that. Before, before you let it would be wrong. It would we'll be wrong. For, it would be wrong for that commission uh -huh. if they actually funded embrace. For yeah, example, yeah, yeah. there very. are a gender commission. Gender stands, like gender stands for both, both they are female and male. Yeah. Yeah. So if they are spending yes. money, if they'd be spending money on embrace and not spending money on gender on the boy child, that would be totally wrong. Okay, I. I'd like to give you the confidence that not even a penny. Uh -huh. no, you I'm just asking you where well, you get fine. the money to move around. But let's, let's go back to that. Is, in I'm fact, that is one of my concerns. But before we move on, yeah, there's this there's something Mweshimiwa Elachi has just said. She said I attended a, an embrace. Uh, <laughs> forum. I have been asking her during the break. And you ate lunch from them. And I ate lunch, lunch. Yes, yes. apparently. Yes. I have been asking yeah. her during the break. And you took Padia. To kindly. And I took Padia. No, no, there was no Padia. Oh, there was no Padia. Kindly, give me, <laughs> but kindly give me evidence. And okay. the reason why this is important Even if you didn't attend, we hope by the end of this show, you'll actually see the reason why you she actually needs to need to I, I need be to be convinced. Embrace. I okay. need to be convinced. Okay. And the reason why I am bringing up this point of the accusation that I attended. It was not an accusation. And the alleged false accusation that I attended an embrace function. Yeah? The reason why I'm bringing up this point is to now go back to Mweshimiwa Rosa Bui. She said that when they were launching the Embrace Women, they had women from Guruma, over. they had you know, over. over 300 women cut across different uh, fact, social backgrounds. Now it is 500. Yeah, yeah. 500 women cut across different social backgrounds, different yeah. economic backgrounds. And you see, for me, my concern is that, you see, as a young person, one of the things that I have faced in my journey towards trying to be a voice for the young people in the, in the, in the political space has been we that the young youth people... Agenda that the young people are usually used as a rubber stamp. A rubber stamp how? That you have people who sit somewhere, decide, come up with an agenda that does not include your views or your opinion, an agenda that is uh, supposedly supposed to you know, cater for your interests. And then now when they are having the big launch, you're invited as a young woman, you know, representing the young women, let's say, if you're in university, like she, she rightfully mentioned, the current the president for university, Nairobi University, Anne Vuria, you're brought there as a rubber stamp to show the society that indeed we have young people in this. But when you begin to question these young me women, you. let, me, let me finish, mm. when you begin to question these young women, to what extent Were does this involved? embrace women involve them? And even beyond this embrace women, to what extent are, are what they being the involved? What, what is, the is the their... They, 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 they say... They they say they are invited. Let me finish. Yeah. They say they are invited to these forums, and that is it. There okay. is no okay. beyond. There is okay. no engagement okay. beyond that. Let okay. me and, and this you. brings. And this brings. Listen. And let me just finish. And this brings in the concern that when we are talking about um, increasing, uh, we are having more women included within the governance space, within the political space. Mm -hmm. Do we create an environment that shall ensure there is posterity for some of these pro Young propositions women. that we are making? Mm -hmm. That even as we are saying, have more women uh, nominated, or even as we are saying that the president should nominate a, a female deputy president. Are we thinking that, you know, at the end of the day, when you exit politics, which you will eventually, someone else needs to come over and take over you, over the leadership once you're, once you're gone. 
okay. are we holding the hands of these young women so okay. that at the end of the day, the same struggles that these women are facing, yes. we don't have, have to face to okay. Okay. Let's, let's get an Look, answer. Just let me correct you. When we talked about the first meeting that Embrace had, it was not an invitation to a launch. That was a brainstorming session. Okay, that included all those young people and included all what you'd like to call the rural women, included all social classes, included all the professionals, all the, you know, that was a brainstorming session. Now, I don't know what you mean. A brainstorming session is a session where people discuss and give ideas and have inputs. Now, the young people were involved there, so I don't know what you mean by saying that inviting people they just for a lot for a big thing. So I'd like to correct you about That's not what happened. That is not what happened. Okay. Okay. And I want Perhaps to it's an impression your statement created. No, no, no. Let me say this. And, and, and no, no, I'm, I'm not finished. Look, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. And if you look at the agenda of embrace, I don't think there's anybody in this country who has taken the issue of femicide head on like Embrace did. How? I'm a woman over 50. Probably I will not get into a situation where somebody might want to put me in the harm's way like they do to our young girls. So that was not an issue for the older women, yeah? But because we know these are women and these are young girls and these are people who need protection, Embrace took it as its agenda. You don't even seem to know about that. No, I know about that. Do you fact, know? I was know. it a good and, thing and, or it was a bad thing? And, and I have an opinion, a very strong opinion about that. Bad this is my problem. This is my problem with such reactionary, what I would like to call reactionary solutions. You see, the thing is, these women have been elected as legislators. Their role is to come up with legislation, to come up with long-term solutions to some of these problems. Yes. My concern and challenge is... The women tend to find, um, and, and, and I'm not even going to attack women leaders, I'm just putting it as it is out there, mm -hmm. that when all these cases of femicide were going on, the only reason why they reacted... Femicide? No, 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 I, I, we, we, are, we, are, we are talking about... Just briefly, we are talking about, talking about, about that. Yes. Yeah, just yes. briefly. In fact, this is important, and the reason why it is important is that we are talking about what is the effectiveness of these women. Are these women leaders being strategic when they are approaching issues because when you hold a, a rally what looks like a rally to talk about it looks like a rally i watched it live it was at nairobi university when you hold what looks like a, basically a demonstration let me call it a demonstration yeah that you are now talking about femicide you're, you're now condemning femicide does that stop a young man back in kakamega who is going to hack Ruth, his think, wife because of a disagreement about Ruth, Ruth. I think okay. 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 what, okay. what okay. kind of what okay. kind of what kind of solutions you made your point what kind of solutions and, and i have I haven't made my point just yet. And my point is that these women leaders need to step out of the, the comfort of political uh, alignments and political narratives of the day. Because no offense, handshake right now is a political narrative, which has, and, and I'm not saying that when it is a political narrative, I'm not trying to point it in a negative light. Political narratives have always built either positive outcomes um, or negative okay. outcomes. Okay. Okay, so my, so my, my worry is that beyond political, trending political uh, narratives, do these women leaders actually fulfill their mandate okay. of okay. legislating? Okay. Okay. First of all, is not just about no, 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 no. Yes. First of Let's all, hear from <laughs> in Parliament, mm -hmm. we have young women. I saw Zuleka the other day coming with a baby. So first of all, Ruth has to understand, today, Parliament has more young people than even the ones you're talking about. That's number one. In Embrace, we have Lesuda, we have Zuleka, we have Gladys. Those are all below 35, we are talking about, and there are many. And therefore, for you to turn, I, I want us to engage our country knowing very well that we have young people and they're in leadership today. And therefore, there's no blame game. First of all, let's start from there. There's no blame game that we don't have young people. Doing. We have the Sakajas, everyone, fantastic young people who are there. But at the same time, now when you look at the issues we are raising, if it's femicide, whether it was a rally, whether it was a forum, but the most important thing that in the end on Madaraka Day, the head of state realized there is a cry and we must deal with it. And I think that is how, that is how political issues, when you are in politics, that is how you carry your advocacy. Even if you go in today, see you are a lawyer. Yes. Trust me, you'll have to use a lobbying and a, a, an advocacy tool mm. to get the agenda be heard. That is how you bring in the DCI to stand. Yeah. And, 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 and let me say that. That is how, wait first, wait first, Ruth. That is how you bring in my, uh, the CS Matiangi yes. to listen. And from there now, you needed to have asked, 
after all that, what, has what are the frameworks now you have put in place? Number one framework. And that is the question listen, I was going to ask. I'm answering yes. because you didn't listen to what the CS Matiangi <laughs> said. Number one, there is a framework he has put in place to ensure we will have police who are, will go for special training. Not those gender desks that we used to have. Special tra training in understanding how defilement, rape, because that is one of the challenges we've always faced. That when a woman is raped or defiled or a, a, a baby, you have no policeman who, or woman who is understanding where you are coming from. First they tell you, you have to bring, you have to see the semen, you have to, now we are saying, train them before they even go to those desks. Number two, that we even as within our document, we are saying cases of defilement and sexual violence, we need the courts to give us a minimum of how you deal with it. Because you find you've gone in for rape, all of a sudden the judge does decide, oh, now you can have a bond and go back to where you yeah. and start intimidating mm. people. And you can see the cases of uh, our girl in Migori and many others. Today, we are asking, where did those cases end? So, so that we don't make sidebar, uh, as he's no, asking. Say. No, no, no. <laughs> Beatrice, because can, I, have... can I just add to what you're saying? <laughs> yes. This was not a rally. Yeah, yeah. This so was, was not a rally. A protest in, in by the women. Yeah. And the university to the students. the minister of interior, who is in charge of security of this country, to say that one death or one attack more is just one too many. Mm -hmm. So we had the DCI, we had the minister there, key people who are the charged IG. with the, the IG, people who are charged with the responsibility of security. Yeah. And we needed them to make a statement and make a commitment. Mm. I'm, I'm looking at you nodding, and I know that you're getting convinced, because surely. <laughs> no, I, 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 I am getting convinced. Yes, yes, you're yes. saying it's a rally, yes. it's just for what? This is what it was for. Okay. To get okay. them to make okay. that commitment. Okay. Let's 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 move on. We can't finish <laughs> no, this. No, I, I think yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I think before I think before we move on, yeah. I think the concern of the Monainchi is that do we have reactionary leaders who wait for things to happen, reports to come up before they can be, before they can they can they can comment? Okay. Because okay. remember when all this was happening, and I'm sure you guys were very active on your social media accounts. You probably saw people asking, "Where have you been all but we this deal time?" With these and, and the demand I deal with these and, issues in Kisumu and, every and, day. And, and the demand. And the demand of the citizens is that can we see women leaders over and above political movements and organizations Do something unite right. okay. over and above what the narrative of the day is, unite and actually push the agenda of the women. Not, to wait, why, not, not to wait for, and this is why this is important, not to wait for a handshake to begin talking about issues that affect affect okay. women and children. No, 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 remember no, 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 remember no, no, during no, the no, election. No, 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 Ruth, allow I me think to your finish. Point, no, your no, point I have to give Ruth. this <laughs> example. I have to give this example because it is very critical. During elections in 20, 2017, remember that there was a time when uh, there was a lot of police brutality that was ongoing. Mm -hmm. And the people who were victims were mostly women and I children. Know. And some of this and, and some of the women who are now pushing for peace, yeah? yeah. Were on the other then. side, were okay. on the other side of the spectrum when they should have been standing and saying, regardless of my political affiliation, this is wrong. This. It is okay. it is violence against women. It is affecting children. It is wrong, regardless of who I am supporting. Even if the person I am supporting is a perpetrator. So my question Ruth. and the question of the citizens is: Can we see women organize over and above the narrative of the day and push for the agenda of women? Good. Ruth, and, uh, for me, I, I agree, Ruth. But let me tell you this: Ruth, I let us not pretend here. Yeah. No, I don't like pretends. I don't like people who we talk theory when we know even them. They were on one side of the divide. Yes. Let us and she's Kenyans. a woman. We want and to I solve the problem. And let us agree. So tell me what you've done. The two I am protagonists, woman. if they came together, mm -hmm. you bring in the inspirations of those who were divided on both sides. I mean, I remember I was a very, very, I, I would say, very cr a critic on the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was a Kenyan. And that's how our Kenyan politics has been. So let's not, let's, let's bring the solutions as you said. So let's not pretend at the oh, oh ha. But all uh, Kenyans will always be on one divide. Yeah. And let Beatrice, us thank God the handshake came and decided, let us now dissolve now that this. Is no, where the problem no, lies. No problem. That is where the there problem no lies. Problem. What there's she no has problem. just confirmed there's is that no problem. women leaders in this country will Literally. wait for certain political conditions no, to come Ruth, together no, 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 before no, 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 they can fight no, for an agenda. No, that, that, that is exactly what she has said. So let me ask you. Excuse me, I need to have an opportunity here. No, Beatrice. I also need an opportunity. Ruth, I'd like to tell you this. <laughs> to be fair to all pol most of the women leaders, in their own counties or in their own areas of representation, they deal with issues of sexual-based violence, whatever it is, 
every on almost an, a daily basis but when you see women coming together to do what we did at the femicide forum it is because we know that collective voice is stronger than our single voices in our counties because each of us deal with those issues in our yeah, counties true. so we decided that let us now come together and show these people and show the country that this is not just a problem in Kisumu. Yeah. It's just not a problem in Kakamega. It's just not a problem in Nyandarwa. It is a problem that, that affects the whole country. Mm. And so our collective voice was much stronger and much louder. And that is why it got attention. Mm -hmm. So don't tell us that women have been sitting and waiting and then they're waiting for Hanchek to do this. Direct, we do you know. this even before Hanchek. We deal with these issues. Probably it's you not know, just pronounced it makes, because... No, it just makes me feel like you are too I am not appreciating. Yes, not appreciating. I don't care if you no, appreciate or not. No, I actually do. It <laughs> makes me feel like, like you don't know what's going on. No, You're no, the no. one who's too up here. No. We deal with these issues in the grassroots every day. And when we come together, it's because we want we everybody this is a common problem and we want to have that collective strong voice you, see, you seem to just no, think listen, that we are waiting because you don't know Mashimua, what Mashimua. women Mashimua. leaders are doing all first over of all, the country first of, all, first of all i need to reject the narrative that you are calling me elitist <laughs> why because why because because first and foremost i come from you know one of those uh, families that you would not say are privileged so i know what struggle looks like but i know about I your know, argument I, not I, like and, and, and what also, you and, not no, your no, past no. we all and, have past and and the kind of argument i'm trying to bring yeah. here and listen to me Moshi, well, the kind of argument i'm trying to bring here is the argument that every citizen down there the person that you are saying you're working for back on the ground yes. is talking about because what the solution that this uh, and i'm and i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to who are I'm those? Not trying to paint to I'm paint sure your Mama is not talking about I that. Am not I'm to sure paint. that the women in Listen. Kakamega who stopped going to school because they got pregnant and the Mweshimiwa of Kakamega has taken them back to let school us not despite divert. the fact that let they have not, children. I mean, those let are us not talking run away. Like let that. Us this not, is you. Let us not run away from the problem. No, and the we're problem not running is, away from the problem. And the problem is this, that now that you are saying that back at the, back at your constituencies you've been dealing with these issues, right? And we continue how come, to deal with How them. come that even as you're saying you're dealing with them, there really doesn't seem to be an end to these problems? And this is where the citizens are saying. And that is and, why and, I and, say. And, 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 where, and where I'm coming up and, and I kept insisting and saying, do these women leaders actually exercise their legislative role? So okay. that at the end of the day, when you're coming up with a solution, it is not when you're saying you're dealing with these issues, how are you dealing with them? Are you dealing with them from the point of now an issue has taken place? It is being reported to you. Right. Okay. Are you Ruth, dealing with them from, from the grassroots, okay. the, from the root of the ground? Ruth, I think Ruth, that your concerns have been So that when Rosa Boyu... So you are are so that when Rosa Boyu... Your concerns have been understood. No, 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 no. no. are sweating in the bar. sweating in the bar. we have understood your concerns. There is no problem of... of, of, of uh, we have understood yes. your concerns <laughs> and the real response. Yes. I, I, I just want to tell Ruth, can I Kenya is a, a very yes, interesting we'll country. We'll 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 we have uh, we'll the we'll sexual offences bill. We yes. have the Children's Act. We, yes. Kwanza, you are a lawyer. You know that yeah. we have too many laws than even what we are supposed to be having. Kenyans have just refused to, now agree, fight is to, I mean, to ensure to that they are to the rule and, be, and follow what the rule is saying. That's why in the courts we have funny things happening. That's why even our own citizen, and I always say, in the end of the day, it's not just the leader. It is also the citizenry who have the responsibility to follow. Because when you go and rape, like now the enumerator who was raped yeah, in Maseno, yes. honestly, mm. you await when she's just entering her house and you go and rape, you see, that, that is not now the leader. That is also the citizenry mm -hmm. and how mm. our culture has just changed to be. A culture where all of us must get responsible and okay. change. Okay. Yeah. Can you not ask us a question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just sitting here. Actually, I think I should walk off and just allow you. No, 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 no. All right. The women, I have about five minutes before I take a break, but I need you to weigh in on this because yet again, we'll go back to the two factions. You women have allowed men to divide you along political lines. They say that women are your worst enemies, but you have effectively done that. This other one follows the deputy president, and yes. this other one follows yes. the president and Absolutely. proudly does it. I, so you've have, you have allowed men to divide you. I think one, uh, I've allowed one man <laughs> in my life to influence my life, and that's my husband. Okay, <laughs> And I don't think I would ever allow another man to, to affect what I do. Okay? Is, that, is it that bad? No. Oh. I mean, like you are saying that we allow... Men to divide, men yes, to along, divide along political us. lines. And yes, along and what lines. I actually said is, I, as Rosa Buyu, am not supporting President Uhuru Kenyatta because he's the president of Kenya. 
ever since All 2013 when I didn't support him. He was already president of Kenya, but I didn't support him because I didn't think he stood for what I stood for. But when he came out in the open in March and stood out and said, this is what he wants for Kenya. It resonated with what I, as Rosa Buyu, I, as a woman of Kenya, would like for Are Kenya. Are you sure you didn't and do it because of Raila Odinga? Oh, no. If Raila Odinga today decides that he wants to do something else, that, for example, he wants to delve in corruption, and I know, and Embrace knows that he's fighting against corruption, and Raila Odinga now becomes a proponent of corruption, believe me, You're we not are not going to follow him. Okay. But we follow him, and we follow him fanatically because he stands for what resonates with us. Okay. Do, do you get that sentiment that you have allowed men to divide you and now women are busy fighting among themselves and calling each other names? First of all, we've never called anyone names as Embrace. Let's start from there. Mm -hmm. We have never True. gone on a podium and called, especially a woman. I've always believed in what we were mentored by our eminent women. Honorable Kabera, Honorable Martha, Honorable Charity Ngilo, Honorable Eda Gashukia, Honorable Roswa Ruhio, and many others. That one of the things they trained us, you cannot go on a platform to abuse a, a woman. fellow woman. And then regardless, say, call yourself embrace. How do you do that? Regardless. We are saying we are embracing, and then you are abusing. No. And even the men, we have never. It is a none of our responsibility. Our responsibility is what we believed in. What is our vision? What is our mission? What are our, our principles and core principles, values as core embrace? values as embrace. It's very critical in the whole agenda. Okay. And I think one of the things we have agreed and we have followed since we started in February to date is that we will never, if you're talking about unity, then you can't go and abuse even a leader of any region. Mm. Because that region, they believe in that leader with a purpose. Mm. So you can't go there and start abusing and thinking of others. And that is what I would want to really pray. That as women, go in and talk about issues. Be issue-based, but not to go and tear down your fellow woman that I see you, mm -hmm. Ruth is young, wants to be yeah. this. And now I go into your personal, I go into, then you're not a, you're not a leader. And you're not a woman in first place. You have decided mm -hmm. um, to be a woman, but a man yeah. in terms of how you think. And Ruth, just for yes. information, Ruth the other day, just after, and this. she's yes. allowed me to speak. Yes. The other day, the Embrace Women actually took the lead into, le into talking to the Sudanese women. Yes. We know that they, they haven't come as far as we, we have mm -hmm. in terms of peace, peace yeah. and in terms of just the rights that we are enjoying, albeit not as much as we should in this country. So we actually met them and we said, you are not Kenyans, but you are women, despite the fact that you come from Sudan. Mm. And we shared the little knowledge and the little experience we have with them because we want to uplift them as women to bring them to the level that we have and even higher if they can go. I mean, because embrace, when you talk about embrace and you talk about peace, you're not in your small cocoon, in your small county or in your small country. You are looking at women globally. Mm -hmm. The other day again, when the, there was the inter, intergenerational uh, women leadership that was meeting, spearheaded by former presidents like Joyce Banda, I mean, Embrace was there mm -hmm. because we also want to learn from them. They've got a lot to teach us. But as we learn from them, we also want to impart exactly what you're talking about yes, to the young, younger women. Yes. Because it's about learning and it's about women coming together regardless of what generation you stand for. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that is something that is, uh, we should hold on to. As, and it doesn't matter who is bringing it forth. Because okay. I know that people seem to think that if it is coming from so-and-so, then it's bad. Mm -hmm. Can we start looking at what is being put forward? For okay. example, for example, yes, when you talk about point. handshake, mm -hmm. I see you talk about handshake with a twitch in your mouth. Because some <laughs> people have come up to say, how can two men just come up and determine what the country must talk about? This BBI that they formed with their nine-point agenda, how does it affect, who are they? I don't look at who they are. I look at the nine points agenda and I see, are those things affecting the country? Are there things we can input in? And would it make our country a better country? And if it would, I go with them and give my opinion on them, regardless of who brought it up. Great. I know yeah, you want to come. <laughs> Should I say yeah? <laughs> I know you want to give yes, your input. Want. I, you'd want to, but I'm taking a break. I just want you. I'll come back to yes, you. Yes, just bear with yes. me. So I like when to you read. Say, yeah, well, what are we supposed to <laughs> say? Money. <laughs> 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 
I like to read this tweet from uh, Frederick Okang, Secretary General of, of, of uh, Tharwe Alliance. I wanted to say Punguza <laughs> Mzigo. I wanted to say, I wanted to say that. <laughs> I wanted to say that, but that's his name on Twitter yeah. now. So, because we're coming back to discuss this, you have been uh, branded as spoilers because Punguza Mzigo is seeking to Punguza you people. I mean, the, the women. I'm going to talk about what they are really Punguza. So yes. So, the, the tweet is this. Uh, he says that the talk of unity by the embraced bandwagon is nothing bandwagon? more than a charade. It's just an <laughs> urban women's club. They are nowhere in the villages where the real Wanjiko. Chebe and Atienos are. That's what you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a break before they respond. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back Since inside. Back. In the village, we will see how they <laughs> Yani someone took their sweet time and thought about us. Rambo, Rambo, Rambo TV, simply beautiful. And less talk. Nairobi 96.3, Mombasa 101.5, Meru 93.9, Nyeri 104.9, Eldoret 102.7, and Nakuru on 97.7. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Nation FM, Instagram at Nation FM, and on Twitter at Nation FM KE. Nation FM. More music and less talk. Theatre Sensations Hot Swings Entertainment are back with another rib cracky comedy play, Forget Me Not, at the newly refurbished Nairobi Film Center for Money Nairobi Cinema. September 5th, 6th at 7 p.m., Saturday 7th, and Sunday 8th at 3.30 and 7 p.m. both days. Charges 699. Buy one, get one free for the show on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Buy one, get one free for the show on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. show. Food and drinks will be available. And Mississippi Band will be live before the show on Friday the 6th. For reservation, call 0722 or 0718 745541. Forget Me Not is a Hot Swings Entertainment, rib cracky comedy play by none other than Salimon. Where are we headed as a country? Every time we make a step forward, we do two backwards. Any fool with huge amounts of money can be president of this country. It is no longer about service. Why can't we move these people out and find somebody who can make the right decision for the country? You're the experts, you can tell but me. We have to change the way we arrive at our leaders. We have to. Organized crime, terrorism, and corruption, they're really siblings. We don't need 10 cases. We just need two cases done properly, and it will serve a lesson. Justice can only be found if I prosecute what I have claimed, bring the evidence, and say this man is guilty. AM Live, every weekday morning on NTV. When the spirit of Kenya got going that magical day, it never looked back. And now, the same spirit is ready to take Kenya to the next level, led proudly by a new generation. Kenya King, Shangilia, Hasolia Kenya. Well, get your women's get your 
Mirna, kutafuta hiyo very useless. Swali ambayo iko saa hizi ni je, unapataje pesa ya studio? Je? Uliko nataka ongeze mshahara wangu? Eh, hata hiyo kazi yako tunaweza pita nayo. Kwani iko nini? Mimi na yeye tunaweza danisha mahali. Si ni kazi. Ni ngazi. Tauna adabu. Bwana anapatikana kwa neno. Sio kwa Instagram, sio kwa Tinder. Ati unasema nini? Mimi sikumbuki tu kisain memo, tunafai kwa tunawachungia watoto. Mbra yule ana simu niambie ni kazi gani tunafanya kwa hii nyumba. Fadhali si turibebe watoto. Wewe endele ukiosha nyumba. <laughs>
okay? And I also know that there is a reason why our li uh, living standard or our, our, uh, our, uh, our living standard is so expensive and so costly. Why? Because of things like corruption, okay? But what I the problem I have with Punguza Mzigo is it seems to have just one aspect, that one of high wage bill, and its whole proposal is based on how to reduce this wage bill. So their concern seems to just be on, uh, at one level. That is the problem I have with them. And I also think that they're playing populist politics. They want to get attention of the citizens. attention and support of the county assembly. But if these county members of county assembly actually look at what Punguza Mzigo is saying about them, they'll find that they are the ones who are being Punguza at first. Okay. Why am I saying that? Remember that we have 290 constituencies in this country. The way the wards were carved out was at an average of five wards per, per constituency. constituency. Yeah. And that is what gave us an, approximate, uh, an approximation of 1,450 wards. But Punguza Mzigo is saying those constituencies are going. To be reduced. We are going to now have 47 constituencies. Why? Because the county now becomes the constituency. What they are not telling us is how are these wards being carved out. Because, for example, in Kisumu County, we have seven constituencies. Because of the average of five wards per constituency, we have 35 wards. So we have 35 elected MCAs. Now, when the constituencies go, and instead of seven, we are going to have one constituency which is Kisumu County, but it will be called one constituency. So are you telling us in this one constituency, we are then going to have five wards? So that means out of 35 wards, you now have five. five MCAs. Who have you punguzad? MCAs. MCAs. Who have you punguzad? <laughs> so they are silent on that, and the MCAs are actually not seeing that they're the first ones who are being punguzad. They are actually silent on that. Okay. How are they going to come up with those MCAs. But in the same breath, they are lying to the MCAs that the ward is going to be the level of develop, the basic or lowest level of development through the ward development fund. So if you have five wards in a constituency, which is Kisumu County, and you have ward development fund for those five wards, is it enough for your whole county? So I want people to look at this clearly and closely because they are hyping this Punguza Mzigo by thinking they are targeting members of parliament and actually stating that this will be the salary. How can you state a salary and, and, and be detailed about a salary in a constitution? So come five years when the salary goes up, you always have to amend. amend. And okay. what people need to know, because this is an, a constitutional amendment bill, there will be no opportunity for Kenyans to amend anything. You either take it or As leave it. it. If okay. there's anything you don't like about it, mm. too bad. Wait you are going to take it wholesome. Wait, wait for, for another, another opportunity. So, so yes. these are issues that must be looked at. Okay, Beatrice. I, I think the most uh, unfortunate part of Punguza Mzigo is that they did not look at many of the issues that them themselves, uh, the chairman, was part of the process of the constitution. Now, even if you dissolve parliament, it is only 2% of the revenue you have removed. Meaning, You've still left money for corruption. You've still, and I think what they needed to have asked themselves, we are just going to census. There will be boundaries to be checked on. Already Kenyans, uh, people from Kisumu, uh, Central, everyone, uh, even just Nairobi. You can imagine in, my, the cons in the Great North, where, we, where I vied. And you imagine now, my honorable member of parliament, is supposed to take care of 150,000. Those are just voters who woke up in the morning to vote for different leaders, yes. But now he's our leader, he's taking care. Yet, we have another constituency here, which has only 12,000 people who have voted. And now you come up with Bungu Zamziko and you want to tell me, Damu County or Isiolo that has two constituencies is equal to Kakamega that has 12 constituencies or Kiambu. First of all, you need to ask yourself, then how do you bring in again the issue of the Constitution, Article 27, that talks about equality and equity and everything. You have killed it. First of all, it's like you're striking it from the Constitution and bringing in an amendment. Do you think they were trying to address a mischief of achieving 50-50 by doing this proposal on their constituencies? No, they, they Because they're saying at, uh, elected man uh, and elected woman good. from... Yes. The, 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 their proposal was to 
you, you look at it and you think this is the best. So it sensationalizes. Uh, sens what's the word? Sensationalizes. Good. <laughs> you to think this we, is we, the we, best. We are good at it. But it's not. Yeah. But it's not. Again, oh, <laughs> the <laughs> sensationalizes. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. But the, 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 the most important thing is when you now bring in a concept that people feel it entices you to it's think, populist it, yeah. to, to think that emotions. that is the yeah. best mm. it whips you and you find yourself uh, uh, now buying in but you're not reading the nitty gritties, the nitty -gritties the, and you're not the also reading yes. the amendments where the constitution what it says vis-a-vis -vis the amendments they are bringing okay. and that is yeah. where they have now closed in now, if you ask me, so the county assemblies have forgotten Article 177 says you cannot start your county assemblies without having your two thirds. Meaning, until you agree, they never put in and said, fine, we shall have county assemblies and ensure there's also a man and a woman. I don't know how in those five count, uh, how, it will be divided. Words, yes. how it will be divided so that you ensure you also have the same Article 177 carried with its formula to this new bill that you're bringing. Okay. So for me, mm -hmm. that is where I find uh, the bill, okay. first of all, is dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there is no K Kenyan who will allow their constituencies to be Mind. dissolved. Oh, okay. No Kenyan. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you mean every, leaders? They, no, forget <laughs> leaders. Mm -hmm. Oh, the people. Oh, oh, oh. The, the now people these themselves. are the people. The people, the people. You go to Korea and now say, oh, now let us take Korea South and Korea East. We'll bring make it, it in Korea. Uh -huh. yeah. We'll see how. Or you go to Mbere <laughs> and tell the Mbere people, oh, now Mbere is going. Uh -huh. So Let's Mbere bring. South, Mbere Sijibat, and you are now coming to Embu or Runyenje. It will not happen. You will see how okay. they, or Zaraka, Look. the same. Okay. You see, you mm. see, today marks the nine-year anniversary since the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, and we need to understand that the spirit behind the 2010 Constitution, the first and foremost spirit behind it, or rather one of the core aspects of the, of the Constitution of 2010, uh, was to basically try and fight long-standing discrimination against certain groups, certain individuals, mm. certain communities. Mm. And that is why we had new, uh, new we, we had an entire Bill of Rights included, we had new provisions on land, we had a lot of you know, affirmative seats. action. And I'm going to speak specifically upon affirmative action. One of the biggest arguments that Muzamzigo is putting forth or across is that, oh, the women leader's position needs to go. Nominative positions for women needs to go. Women representative positions need to go because the, the same uh, the argument I had brought previously that, oh, these women leaders have not delivered, they have not, um, they have not shown us that they deserve to have these seats. We are forgetting that, you see, the reason why we enacted the provisions to have not more than two-thirds of the same gender occupying uh, elective or appointive seats was so that we can allow for groups that have been marginalized for a very mm. long time to find a space. You see, the mm. thing is, I always say, if you're not seated at the table making the decisions, then you are on the menu. For as long as we don't have women at the helm of leadership, and by the helm of leadership, I mean for as long as we scrap off women uh, representative seats and even these women nominative seats, we are going to really uh, do away with sal salient issues that affect women, children, persons with disabilities. There are some issues that have been able to be addressed ever since the ever since uh, 2013 when we now had the first uh, basically um, reincarnation, basically the, the putting into place of, of the working of the constitution. There are some issues that have been able to be resolved right now simply because we have women occupying these women representative positions. We shouldn't be quick to do away with affirmative action simply because now we are seeing, because the, the, the greatest challenge is that people don't understand uh, the functions of women representatives. These women representatives have not been sufficiently funded to be able to carry out their functions that are widely, you know, that are very wide in nature. So we need to understand what this affirmative action was in, was in place for. Okay. It was in place for to ensure that persons with disabilities, women, children, there are issues that cannot be understood by the male population and we understand that our political system has been patriarchal by nature over time, that these issues can be able to be resolved by women. Right now we saw just the other day the president assenting to the free sanitary free towels sanitary bill. bill. That is, and you see, it is, a, it, it is an issue that looks like a very tiny issue, but we are forgetting that there are girls 
who get out of drop out of school because of because of menstruation. Oh, yes. There are girls who fall pregnant simply because they cannot afford to buy pads, right. and therefore a border border guy, you know, entices you. You have unprotected sex. You get HIV and AIDS. You get a child you are unable to take care of. So it it looks like a small issue. But because the women leaders were able to sit down and identify it as a problem affecting a wide uh, population of the society, it was able to be resolved. Okay. I'm not saying that affirmative action should be permanent, no. Affirmative action should get to a point where now we say, now enough Actually, of no it has, women. Yes. Yes. it has a exactly. sunset clause. It has a sunset clause. Exactly, it has a sunset clause. So can we give it time? We, we are, in fact, it has not even been implemented fully. It is one of the few remaining aspects of the constitution that has not been implemented almost 10 years later. Mm -hmm. Everything else has been implemented except affirmative action. And I know there are people out there who are asking that, okay, fine, so these women leaders, we just need, fa what we need to do is we need to capacity build these women because let's not forget that leadership for women seems to be a new concept. Most of these women are now just getting into the field because now there is this space that has been opened and created the for them to get into leadership. Okay. I know that people That's out there who look up to me mm. and say, Ruth, you know, you, you deserve to be in a political seat. But when I look at myself, I don't have the financial muscle to get into a political seat right now. I don't have even the political name or, or, or goodwill to be able to, to be nominated, for, to get into a political so, seat. So, so you so ride with that opportunity so can, would affirmative work, action. Affirmative yeah. action would, would work. work. And, and, let me okay. just, and let me just, affirmative action would work for me. What needs to be done is that let us capacity build these women. Affirmative Action that, yes. has provided a platform for women to be identified. We are now seeing the first one of the first female governors, uh, Waiguru. How did she get there? Because she was appointed as a cabinet secretary. I'm not you going know, to talk Ken, about how she performed. Slowly, I'm but, seeing uh, Ruth getting to really support this. Ruth, just but, hold it. No, no, no. You no, talk no, about okay. Let, let me just okay. give another no, example. No, no, Ruth, you, 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 you have, have said, said yes, you know, yes. So it is a platform for women to yes. be identified and for, for the society to also uh, accept the, the concept that you okay. know what women can lead the other day we saw a show that was called miss president basically they were trying to to tell society that you know we can There's actually have a okay. female president okay. no, but, but one I, of, I the, just things, one of the issues that embrace put forward was in whatever we are putting forward we are not going to accept that any gains made by women should actually be watered down yes, yes. watered down so for all the reasons that you've talked about because 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 yes we are on the same line that okay. all the gains that women have made whether it's affirmative action seats that should not be watered down because it was put there for a reason mm -hmm. ruth i Let just want qualify to qualify for admission yes. to embrace no i want to read already <laughs> i want to read something and when i read something to you if you allow me just one second go ahead if yes. i read it you are just embraced this is what we said about young people because again we are talking uh, inclusion, 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 and we can be talking about inclusion, but you're talking about my age, just what you're talking about that. So we are young people. Mm -hmm. This is what Embrace says. We strongly recommend that 20% of all public appointments at the national and the county government levels be reserved for youth based on their qualification and merit without overemphasizing on the requirement of experience of not more than three years. Mm. Okay. Good. So we observe that the Constitution of Kenya 2010 does not provide for a threshold of appointive and elective seats for the youth, 18 to 34 years, yet they constitute approximately 40% of the population. Without the constitutional threshold, it becomes very difficult to hold government and public bodies accountable, accountable in inclusion of the youth in governance affairs. So basically which what you're is saying, not if what this is adopted, current constitution. Yes. yes. So if you're we saying if this is adopted, I can be appointed to a senior. You will be. Yes. 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 And I you should should must be, be specific. I you should know? Be. Don't just say that no, youth no, no. need to be included. You, what do you mean? Like, what like percentage? Now, like, let's you say know, now, put, yes, 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 percentages. So be yes. specific. Put yes. the principles It doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter who the president is. It is specific. Ruth, isn't that a good thing? A very good thing. I'm going back to be appointed. Keep on fighting. Yes. I think the other, yourself. Okay. Let me <laughs> I hear think the other thing that Fungu Zamzigo did not look like, uh, look, look, at, look mm, at, mm. is the issue of census. While they uh, they were trying to bring in um, a new concept, but they forgot, even in census right now, look at how the constituencies that are grappling with numbers. You find uh, people are saying they're even cheating, they're even bringing in manyatas, they're even doing this. Why? Because numbers are very critical. So for Punguza Mzigo, they must relook at our country and ask ourselves first, where are we as a country in terms, let, let's not talk about representation or we are overrepresented. No. The question should be, while we are overrepresented, have we taken into account how the numbers are within the different 
uh, constituencies and how we should ensure while our constitution says you cannot exceed this number. So for you even, even to start thinking that you want to now change the boundaries of the whole uh, electoral process that we have in this country, you should ask yourself, and how am I going to deal with a constituency that has 200,000? Like Nairobi, you need to add. Because you don't need to if indeed you are yes. saying you are bringing equality and equity within that county. Okay. So that is one thing I would want the Secretary General. As he says, we are not on the ground. He needs to go to the ground and tell the people. Uh, we what, have what proposed going to with this? the yes. boundaries of your county. Mm -hmm. We will be able to remove this and then let him listen to what they will the say. From and it. The feedback. <laughs> yeah. okay. And then He's when actually, he comes here, I think yes. one yes. of the He's things, mm -hmm. I have been in Kakamega, in Lugari and Lukuyani, mm -hmm. and they have agreed it will go back as Lugari. Okay. I think that way the, now I can key, understand one where One of the key things the Kenyans pointed out before the 2010, uh, in the 2010 constitution was the cry that they wanted services brought closer, closer to them. To the people, okay, yes. they wanted to feel this power, they wanted to feel these resources, and they wanted to be part of it. But then, what, uh, uh what Alliance. It? Padre Alliance seems to be suggesting without too much scrutiny is they are actually fighting devolution because, yes. like I said, without them telling us how they are going to constitute these words, if it remains as it is, then. Instead of having 1,450 words, we are actually going to have 235 words. words. Meaning that everything is 235 words in the in whole the country, country from yes. 1450. Yes. So that means everything is being moved away from, from the, the people. people. Okay. Now, is that what Kenyans wanted? He sent another tweet, and I'll read this. I yeah. give you a. Uh, we, we'd have to take a break in about five minutes or three minutes. We need to hear someone uh, else's tweet. Uh, yeah, I was just about to make a <laughs> no, nasty no, no, comment. Him, because he's countering what you're saying. I, I was yeah, making a nasty thing. comment yeah, about my tweet. Uh, can, was, can we look at I was going to make a nasty comment about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, this is uh, not women. Can we listen to this? He says, women must now start thinking of competing in elective politics, not talking about. Oh, we are competing. I am just. I need him Bungoma to start competing himself. He should not tell me that not, not yet I compete. competed and got 36,000, yet he competed and got 10,000. Not he only can that. never say in, that in, on in, this platform. In, in, our platform. <laughs> in, in, our our pro platform. in our proposals as Embrace, yes. we are also saying that nomination lists that come from political parties should not be given before the election because as it currently stands, it should be given 45 days before the general election. Yes. But we are saying let women go out and participate in the election and the nomination list should come after the election yes. considering taking into consideration women who've got out to fight uh, to be elected yes you know only after election, election. and i think that alone mm -hmm. yes. that alone and, and again, but, but, but you know the list is usually the list is usually filed ahead of the election <laughs> this you know that yeah, that's what i'm saying yeah. Yeah. this is what our proposal is and, and, can you allow no, can you allow no no no, 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 no you have to allow have me to, to finish this, this you will you will but you will it's the same thing it's the same thing uh in a minute so he says that uh i'm just coming from bungoma county assembly where out of 45 elected mcs 10 are women it is possible let rosa and elachi know that women are capable and suitable. We are not he saying, we are not saying, to show me, we are not just in a minute because we have a thing. Those who are elected, he should be telling me, as third alliance, we were we able to compete in the country and, we and bring in five 10 million. MCS. Wow. <laughs> at least I was a secretary general. I got 1.1 million votes. Okay. I had nine members you, of parliament, 98 of right. MCS ladies, at that ladies, time. Ladies, ladies. Who in 2007 hey. contested and was number two. He's talking about Rosa, who in 2013 contested Tested for Kisumu West Coast and with them. I mean, you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just in one minute, I have to take a break. No, just make a brief I mean, comment, then I take a break. You see, you see, fine. He's yes. saying that women. That way. He yes. says, yeah, he says Compete, that women, competitive women, politics, women yes. need to start thinking. Mm. Women need to start thinking about running for competitive politics. Yeah. They are already doing it. Not being there are given, still yes. there are barriers within the political system that need to be for and we know that you and know for change to happen, change doing. change takes time, you know. Structural change within political parties and how funding for political for elections takes place takes time. Now the problem I have with Punguza Mziko is that as they are saying, women need to start thinking of running for so this, mm -hmm. this bill is they, for are, they, they are taking away that they're, they're yeah. not giving they're not giving a solution a as mm -hmm. to how these women will be able 
to, 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 I mean, how they will make the ground level for women to run for these elective seats. So I think that before they tell women they need to start thinking okay. of running for elective seats, what are they recommending as yes. a solution? As a solution. Yes. So we we see, to enable the field as a level. All right. Yes. We have to take a break, but he's not the only one. But they one. don't have experience, by the way. Mm. They don't have experience, so mm. he's they not the have only spoken one. from experience. Yes. That's a member of Third Alliance. Is, are you sure I'm about sure that? <laughs> so we're taking the break, but uh, this is Amboya Willis. He says they should roll their sleeves and fight at ground level for those seats. Hakuna Rahisi, ah, those free yeah. posts should be scrapped off. Time for a break. Even I don't, then, I don't, don't just talk as a man and you have never tried. Oh. Try and then tell me. Time for a break. Let's take a break. We'll be back for the final part of the show. <laughs> when the spirit of Kenya got going that magical day, it never looked back. And now, the same spirit is ready to take Kenya to the next level, led proudly by a new generation. Kenya King, Shangilia, Hasolia Kenya. Well, get your women's kid on the Kutaka, you're very useless. Swan and Boy was easy, Jay. Napotaja Pesa Studio, Jay. Ulgunda honga zom sharang. Eh, hey, ateo kasi ako tunesa pita na yokuwa niko ni. Mina yetu nesa dani shamari. Sini kasi? Ni ingazi? Tuna adabu. Bwana na patikana kwa neno. Sio kwa Instagram. Sio kwa Tinder. Ati unasema nini? Misi kumuki tukisa in memo, tunafai kutu na watungia watoto. Mbra yore ora simu uniambie ni kasi gani tunafanya kwa inyumba. Padari situ ribebe wa watoto. Wewe edere ukiosha nyumba. <laughs> Below, slices of life. All right, uh, welcome back. I'm still with the ladies <laughs> here. Okay, oh, so we are here, we are here. There's a point <laughs> which we are wanted to make. What is that? I, I can't ask questions. About okay, the, I'm going to leave and allow you no, to. No, no. <laughs> About the number of votes that that uh, that. Oh yeah, I was saying, you know. I don't think it's relevant, Moshi. I'm not. I'm not, okay, I'm not okay. asking about we the votes. We rule out okay. of order. I, no, no, yeah. I'm not asking yes, about the votes. Yes, she be out of Okay, let's listen. I'm to not that. asking about the votes. I'm just saying. Yes. Let us try and also appreciate that you know in political processes, sometimes it's good also to appreciate what different people have done. Yeah. So you can't come in rubbish and everything. rubbish women and say that, uh, oh, women must vile, tell those women. No, you need to be telling me, in your party, what are the strategies and, and proposals you have put in place for ensure. your party to have more women, women leaders, and these yes. women can win yes. in positions. Yes. Mm. When, you, when, when you do that, I will respect mm. and I will listen, mm. and, I, and then if there's something, mm. we can sit down and say no. And As then, women, and, yeah. we feel this, we can work together. Okay. But if you have not shown me that proposal, and you're trying to tell me now, uh, that uh, as women we have to forget about nominations. It is not nominations. It mm. is the party that sees the strength mm. of a woman and says at this time. And I know we have violated because of what we've been doing. Mm. But now as women embrace, mm. we are saying, mm. let us change this and go back to the old time. Because at that time, women in the party will appreciate when we are giving it to Ruth, they will know. This is a woman who she has worked it, with yeah. the party. Okay. And that's why we are saying we want to look if you have vied, spend money in that party, because that is what we have done as that women. That should be the basis. And, yeah, okay. and, then it should be the see, basis. and then you see, at the end of the day, this bill is going to be subjected to a vote, right? Yeah. After the parliamentary, the legislative process is over, we are supposed to vote on it as, as the society. How are you going to convince women who form 51% of the population yes. to voting do away to vote against voting population 51% voting population, okay. of the voting population to vote against women representatives who have been very instrumental in giving them uh, bursaries to their children in ensuring that when they have given birth they don't have any forms in of, other words know, it's dead, uh, so dead on arrival dead, just that yes, like said. I said how will dead you convince these women you guys to, on vote, this to vote against having people who defend them because okay. now you remember uh, what Ruth was saying that these women who sit and they do nothing and then they wait when now imagine she's actually coming she's with, them. with all these good things <laughs> away. Hey, give me five girls. Yeah. Can, can, <laughs> can we go to the next 
the next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so before we go to the next question, do you allow me to read one more from Frederick? Yes, yes. it's not A. Uh, no, this is, this is nice. This is a nice one. Oh, okay. So he says the you critique... You should have just come to the debate. The critique with, <laughs> oh, with yes. the women. Oh, yes. I promise today I'll be the only man in the... <laughs> no, that would have been Which nice was, uh, we, are, we are humbled on that. Next uh, time, yes. invite him. No, but I, I think I no, should no, have no. lady pan if we panelists have, only. If we have third alliance on this panel, yeah. don't, don't invite us. Because we'll tear each other here. Third alliance will be wondering what just happened, happened here. Studio. Okay, so the last one, he says, uh, the critique on Punguza Mzigo Bill 2019 by Rosa and Elachi is welcome. But let them know that the people of Kenya have said that there will be no more nominations apart from special interest groups protected under Article 100 of the Constitution, which talks about Parliament shall enact. Uh, to promote the representation in Parliament of women, persons with disability, youth, ethnic and minorities, and marginalized. I think he forgot there's an A there for women. Yeah. yeah. I think he did. Yeah. So I think he did. Yeah, because it's exactly the same what, uh, thing. Tell him not to be out women. to fight for yeah. women. I'm oh, wondering, is that, 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 that is uh, uh, of women. the mission and vision of, of uh, Tadwe Alliance. Alliance. I okay. need to understand it. Let's, I don't know. Let's ask but the But you can also read our uh, proposals. On, on you will find that we have said women yeah. must go and buy. By the way, what is what is that specific? I think you read it. Specific promotion to promote women and ensure there's equity. Yes. So let's talk about equity. And the two-third gender rule has never been implemented. One, I think there's no political goodwill. Two, I think women are their own enemies. Because even in Parliament, yes, let me just say it, Rosa. <laughs> let me say it. Even in Parliament, when this is debated, it's supposed to be voted. How many women did we say in Parliament? You know, they're not it, there was no commitment. I think I'm the wrong person to talk about this two thirds. Because you, you, you were in Parliament? <laughs> no, because I fought for it all my adult life. I was a chairperson of Tulithimbili Zamam. Okay. I tell you, and we fought for it from without parliament, from outside uh, parliament. And even now when we're in parliament, we worked so hard towards making sure that this bill passed in parliament. But the greatest impediment against this bill is just the fear from the men. Why? Because gender has been taken to mean women. And what the men don't seem to understand is there could be a time, especially if you have a better atmosphere or a safe atmosphere where women and men can vie on equal footing, that probably women might be more elected than men. And in that case, you might find less men, less than one third, being in elective positions. And in that case, this They'll bill comes in handy yes. for them. So this, what this bill does, it just tries to bring equilibrium so that you have men and women both playing a role in terms of decision making and in terms of uh, de development. So the biggest impediment to having this bill implemented is actually that fear, which should not be there. When you say that women are their worst enemies, I, I don't think it's fair to say that Women are their worst enemies, where were they? Remember, women only make about 24% of the National Assembly uh, members. Out of that 24%, what percentage was, uh, was there? You'll find that 21% was there. But men make the larger uh, what was 76%, the rest of the 76%. What percentage was there? Well, negligible, mm -hmm. probably 30%. Mm -hmm. So who is it who is not supporting this bill? Okay. But you see, uh, one of the things, uh, and that is why I think as Embrace we decided, you know, you have fought for these two thirds four times. Really, you, can't, you must look over a different strategy. Mm -hmm. Because one, this was a government bill brought in by government, tabled by the majority leader. I, 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 and and he, he, he did all his best. Now when the men decide we are the majority, some of them are just standing there. They are looking. Some didn't even vote, they were, and they were saying it. And we had done all strategies that you would wish to have. For me, I think, uh, as we go forward, and, uh, and, 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 and I thank God we will be in this country, may the Lord keep us, men are going to cry on this affirmative action. Men will They'll beg be looking for this for support. affirmative action. They'll be one, looking for support. They will look for it. Okay. And I'm hoping by 2022, uh -huh. we must have known a different strategy, and that is why I will always support, let us have different movements of women because when you go on the ground, women realize, oh, they don't have those men who come and make them just uh, dance and sit. Because you find in a platform, when men now take the microphone, 
All the men are the ones who are going to speak. And they will not feel anything. anything. But yes. when you see two or three women speaking, they start asking, eh? What women is the kind, now have what, spoken. They have spoken. What is the of kind them. of crowd that you get as women when you go, for example, embrace? Huge crowd. Oh, huge crowd, but in terms crowd. of And demographic? huge crowd, men and women. Men, no, women and, 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 and youth. Yes, those okay. ones we okay. take. Yes, um, yes, yes. You, see, you see, for me, I, I like the, the fact that she'd actually just said that the bill, the bill that has been debated before parliament as we speak is a bill that was brought forth by a man. And you see, that is something... Just because the not, man happens to be the leader of majority. No, no, no. There are private sponsored bills by members of parliament. Have we seen a woman coming up with a bill? In fact, right now, this is when we are seeing uh, Gladys Cholet proposing something, which I might not totally agree with when but she's But the last saying, time, this is not the first time the bill was here. The exactly, last time the bill was not brought in by a man. Yeah, well, yeah this is just this one, the one that was now called Duale Bill. This is not the first the time. Last, the, the last time uh, the bill was brought by? A but, woman. Yes. By the way, oh, and, and, and Mama Phoebe is here, and that's why it's good to read our history. Yes, okay. yes. Mama Phoebe is okay. here. Okay, okay. I'm was educated. the first woman to bring in the two-thirds bill. Then we went to Mama Beth Mook. Then we have moved. Sijeni brought. In the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and this I'm was the only first uh, uh, Because first it was bill a tactic. Yes. That that the at least government was trying to. Okay. Oh, so and, you and, thought yeah. because it's a man and government support, no, yeah, it might be. Yeah, because it's leader of the government. And, and, okay. and, yeah. you and you see the thing is, that's why I keep saying strategy, strategy. What strategy are these women using? The same way, you know, we have always been known as, uh, women have always been known to have some form of, I will not call it, please, do not misquote me, but we have a way, let me just use the right word, we have a way of swaying opinion. We have a way of making men and in normal conversations, day-to-day -day operations, we have ways of, of moving our boyfriends, moving our husbands to make decisions. How hard is it for women leaders in parliament to actually entice the men. these men uh -huh. and get them to vote for this bill? And, and, and my worry is, which I'm, seeing, which I'm seeing these two women leaders are, are running away from, was the question that when the bill was being debated, where were the other women leaders? And this, is, this brings to question the fact that our women leaders being paid you know and and, and uh, 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 is it is it he who pays the piper what calls is the tune that what does that what calls the tune yes he who pays the piper calls the tune do we have women and and we've seen it before in parliament remember that time when we were, when the parliament was debating the issue of sugar mercury and sugar and and when parliamentarians were, paid 10, were being paid ten thousand shillings in toilets so this leaves I, us room this I, they, they, were, they were actually fighting over the ten thousand shillings and there was evidence <laughs> to that effect this leaves room us room to that. speculate this leaves us room to speculate she that so women weird. leaders, <laughs> that, that women leaders were paid at that particular time. Because oh, where to keep, they? To, to keep off because parliament. Where Ruth. were they? Where were these women Ruth. leaders? To keep off parliament. And they could not no, account. No. And this is this is don't the other. make allegations and expect to go. Uh, I, I will finish. Yeah. Yeah. Because no, no, no. you see, the thing is, where these women did not account for where they were when a, a bill they a call critical. Bill, yes. A bill that when they go to media, they keep saying is a critical bill. Where were they when Where the bill they? was being okay. passed? Okay. And, and, and also, I also blame this on lack of political goodwill. Good because okay. the, other thing that, the other thing that we need to see is we need to see the executive, and by the executive I mean the presidency, coming out strongly and actually making steps towards implementing the two-third gender principle, not just at the elective, at the elective seat and, and political seats, but even at the, at the, at the uh, executive seats and, and, okay. and, and cabinet secretary seats. And why I'm bringing across this point is that we've seen in South Africa the president appointing half of his cabinet, being very deliberate and saying, half of my cabinet Would are going women. to be women. Just across without, in Rwanda. And we are not even going to debate about it. Rwanda has successfully managed... I'm just going to give you this. Successfully so managed we don't to, give have the an opportunity. to have 64% of women leaders uh, elected and, and some nominated. So basically 64% of, of Rwanda's parliament is composed of women. Mm. But we need to have political goodwill. It starts with the president okay. himself. Okay. Okay. And then now to the women leaders showing us what they have actually done. Okay. And, this is where some I, no, no, no. and this is where I call for change of strategy. And when I say change of strategy is combine a mix of strategies. And I would want to actually, I'm not going to rubbish what Embrace is doing. In fact, I'm very happy that you're saying you're pushing for the implementation of inclusivity for women within the political space. But what I'm saying, not only political have, space. have, have Varied, Even elected, have varied uh, I mean appointed. Have varied strategies. Okay. If approaching it from a diplomatic point of view is not working, can you rally women your point and is make women understand? Your point is made. This is Ruth, Ruth, your point you're is just made. making me feel, you know, I... Uh, you you just need to give her the document so not, that she goes Not even the, just the document. You're talking about enticing. My God. If you're talking, what is enticing? Because the members of parliament, the female members of parliament did all they could. Unless you want to say that they just don't know how. But they did all they could to entice 
the men. But where were but they, they themselves? But they failed. Where were they themselves? I also want to tell when, you, I'm a vice chair of Kewopa. Mm. And we took a register of all the women who were present and all the women who were not present. Out of all the women, there were only 10 women who were actually absent. And five, three of them were on maternity leave. Okay? Nursing their other babies. Seven. The others were... I think, I think four of them were out of the country on a critical mission which they had to attend. So women, we, we, we lobbied women and we made sure that women were there and women indeed okay. were there. So don't just make sweeping statements and expect to go and challenge. No, and don't, okay. don't smile, Ruth. Don't smile. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Anyway, Elati. for me, you know, yes. I, 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 I don't know what to tell Ruth because one, she knows very well, even if all the women were in parliament, the numbers... You needed two thirds, two thirds to, pa to, to pass. pass, to yes. pass. So let's start from where not even two thirds. First of all, women vote for them. You needed mm -hmm. you needed two thirds to be able to even get into a, into voting. a voting. You know, you know. Yes. yes. So for me, in a parliament where seventy six percent is men, yeah, and the goodwill. For me, yeah, yeah, it's true because okay. I mean whether you have your forty seven plus the twenty two or twenty three, you're still much less. Okay. So let us just say. In our country, as I said when we started, we look at laws and we just feel the in fact the people who needed to help this country is just the judiciary. Mm -hmm. If Maraga wanted to dissolve the way uh, Judge Mumbi had said, I think we would have woken up and decided really it's good to respect laws, just the way he did the nullification of the president. You should have dissolved but parliament. you see, because it's a women's issue. No, 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 I think it's a political issue. No, 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 no. It's a political issue. The political issue. political issue was the presidency. I know, that but even in parliament. That history in the whole world. Now this one, where you are being told, the constitution tells you. Mumbi says it, but when it comes to the Supreme Court, uh -huh. they say, they oh, you know, mm -hmm. you have to go and do it, mm -hmm. or we, and they know, ah, you an can't resolve and, parliament. And okay. you know, okay. that what, thing what, of what? assuming things, mm -hmm. because they are just of affirmative action of women, is what, I, in our country, we should start I, respecting. I think, and I think uh -huh. what, I'm not what, being harsh. Uh -huh. No, what I'm Ruth saying, is also uh -huh. saying, oh, let, let and finish. it's not just uh, on women alone. Yes. Yeah. We are saying women people with disabilities, yeah. young people, and yeah. children. Yeah. Okay. Let us start and, and respecting what Ru what the law. Okay. Let us That holds a lot of water is that um, the president would have done better okay. and he I would know. have actually shown the way yeah. because the law was already there. Yeah. So he would have actually shown the way in the sense that any time he the made an appointment, yes. he should have adhered to that principle. So that and if he did, mm. it would have cascaded down. right yeah. down, yeah. you know? And this is why, as Embrace, we are saying, we are not going to leave it loosely that two-thirds gender rule. We are saying that for every appointed position, whether it's the president or who, and at the national level and the, the county level, right up to the village councils, there must be 50, 50 percent. And when I, you are I, so I, specific, then you, you don't give anybody an opportunity to go against it. I you agree know? with that, but okay. I think the president has also tried. Uh, he's uh, tried, well, but while, he could While I look better. at the cabinet and we point out, but you look at the principal secretaries and you realize he has really appointed. It, like it the is, second one. Like it, the second one, he tried even in the nominations. Yes. The, the list he, the, the, he, the, proposed, the, he proposed had rebalanced. Yes. Look at even but the gender commission. No, but you say it was mischievous. No, but you say it was mischievous. It's not mischievous. No, 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 no. I'll tell you why it was mischievous. I think mischievous. it's the politics that we have. No, 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 no. Let but me, let me explain to you why it was mischievous for the and president. And regional balancing. And, and by no. the way, when we are lobbying for but this position. But there are women in all regions. You will, wait first, Rosa. You will find the same, same men are the ones who are removing the women who have been. By the way, it is so interesting in our country how we lobby, we lobby for position. Mm. Okay. You find your own area. You are a woman from that. But who, the men but they who, are saying this one no. But who appears his final signature? Yes, she's yeah. married. Yeah. She's. I, I have to. Well, uh -huh. in the end of the day, you will append the signature. But for, for the first time. Even having that goodwill, even the president going to Canada and yes. pushing and okay. saying, we are saying we are playing the cartoon next. Now we are pushing. We are yeah. saying yes. that he could have done that. Given he could have that done he was the highest office in this country, yeah. actually, if he adhered to that principle, yeah. we'd be talking a different. Which I think but is I'm going saying, to, the men has um, uh, they have failed him. They have corrupted the country. They have eaten everything. I think Can right now my president yes. is realizing. By okay. the way, no, but I'll tell you. We need I'll tell you, I'll, but I'll tell you how, you, how your president was mischievous. And I'm happy. No. Let, let me wait first yes. before you tell me. <laughs> okay, my president, president is not mischievous. mischievous okay, I'll I'll tell you. I want to thank also mm -hmm. the president of uh, Rwanda. DRC. Okay. DRC Congo. Okay. He met us. 
we were with Rosa, and we really pleaded that as you come in, we will want to see a cabinet that has women. And we are happy as Embrace that indeed okay. implemented. we have implemented. seen that. And I really want to thank President Chikedi for doing that. For doing that. Okay. Yes. The reason why I said this is because I have to qualify it. Because yes. everyone has spoken about the second list that went for vetting, yeah. that it had the balance. Yeah. But you see, what the president forgot is that there are uh, CSAs that were retained. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So well, ultimately, then. when this list came out, remember there were CSAs that were yes. retained. Yes. So the balance was, was offset yes. by the fact that there were CSAs yes. that were retained. So the number could not still balance the yeah. two thirds. Mm. So he was still, mischievous. He, has still, he still has two years. Yes. Let us give him. <laughs> but then you have, uh, have uh, uh, other well, positions. We are not saying fire. You yeah. have other we positions like more. ambassadors. Uh -huh. You know, that are in his making. He has positions. Permanent secretaries. And I think they are more, by the way, too. I think the question we need to ask ourselves yes. what is the executive okay before we even i think that is where the loophole is okay and i think maybe we need to relook at the law and amend that because that's how they, 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 they you can easily uh, come out and blame him but him he looks at the executive as cabinet and i'll bring my principal secretaries and i'll but bring does my it stay balanced the, the, uh, by the way in the principal secretaries it's we balanced. have now more move okay, women. more but so it's not we, balancing. We, it is how you balance it okay so that's the loophole we need to deal with okay so this is i'm playing the cartoon next but this is a response that again I can't, from frederick no 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 not frederick <laughs> Not from the Fred, cartoon. But this is this is just before the cartoon. It's important. It comes from Gabriel Gabriel Ogoda, who incidentally was my schoolmate at Maseno School. So Gabriel says this, Chief, <coughs> you were in Third Way Alliance list of proposed nominees for the Senate. You, you. not me. So he's addressing oh, Okano. Okay, okay. Yes. You are in the in the Third Way Alliance list. So he says, if you believe women shouldn't be nominated and you're telling us you are, so you are telling us you are a woman in 2017. Your third way alliance people <laughs> lack oh principle. And he's, yes, he's that's put a list. Look at this list. Thank you so much. Circulated Okango's name on it. <laughs> so no, was was a woman. Woman. Yes, he's asking. He was have been nominated. nominated exactly. Yeah, he was a woman. So yeah, when, when you are so obsessed with Punguza Mzigo and you forget <laughs> and you about corruption, you are going to put yourself in a list which is supposed to be for women okay. because you are so Dad. corrupt. All right, let's play the cartoon. Has brought us to where we are. Thank you so much. That one has Gabriel made is pointed, and by the way, he's he's a columnist with Daily Nation. So oh, yeah, read about yeah, his article yes, sometimes. Yes, yes. He's oh, a bright. He's the same Gabriel. Yes, he's Gabriel the same guy. Oh, yes, he's Oguda. a good writer. Yes, I'm proud. Yes. He was my so he was my schoolmate and for classmate. helping us on that. That's what I was saying. Ta -da. Hey. <laughs> That's okay, here's the cartoon. They do on things. Uh, they should stop it. Let's take a look at this cartoon. <laughs> What's that? All right, that's the cartoon, and uh, you understand it will be all around us, so you can see it. Uh, please, Rosalia, could we have it on the other we screens have also? Out of the um, all right, now. they are all over, so you can see right behind okay. me. Elijah, yeah. there's one here, there's one there. You can see them. So, Hi, comments on this. This is uh, the census is still on. We, we have <laughs> a few days to yeah. the end of census, but you know this is how I it will play out at the, the end politics. of it oh yes in in in, in november when the preliminary report comes out yeah this is how it will play out yes next year august when the final report comes out this is how it will play out so let's begin with uh, I, I think i think for me the way to fight this and i said it somewhere in the morning this issue of preliminary report i don't like it why don't i like it because this is head count isn't it? Mm. When you give a preliminary report in three months and say, for example, uh, Kisumu, you had 10 people, for example, and then next year, August, you come up and say, Kisumu, you actually had two mm -hmm. people. This is going to create a lot of tension. Okay. And it is going to create a lot of mistrust and people are actually going to believe that somebody has doctored or somebody has influenced the outcome of the final results. So for me, I would like to urge the government that take your time, but when you do give us results, don't give us preliminary results. Can you give us the real thing? But there'll be apprehension if it doesn't no, happen no, in three months. Yes. And so the law demands three, three months and then one no, year. No, what I'm saying, yes. because well, they made it easier, now it's not about papers. Yes, Okay, so digital. they just have to analyze uh, because it's digital. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I would think that if, if this preliminary, and then because we saw what happened in 2009 and nine, yes. when you had results when were released it, yes. and then uh, after that results of eight counties or eight constituencies were, were actually disputed, and, disputed all, yes. and then withheld so it creates a lot of acrimony and a lot of mistrust so the government has to do something about that but i also want to say that looking at this look looking at what's going on here yes this is actually brought about by politicians 
and people who are asking people to do the wrong thing. For example, move from Nairobi, come all the way to Kakamega, be counted there, because that is what you must do. Heck, <laughs> this is a census <laughs> that is counting people. Okay. And you can be counted wherever Anywhere. you are, even yes, at yes. the airport. Okay. It doesn't mean that you must go to Kakamega, even if you don't live in Kakamega, but so you are a lawyer, go there. there. Yeah. Because be when you there. come back to live in Nairobi, you are going to strain the services of Nairobi because true, true, true. you are not counted, counted within there. Good so point. Nairobi is not catering for the Good facilities point. that you are going to... So this is actually created Burned by, by the politicians. politicians. Okay. Um, to be honest, my view has been ever since the census started that this seems to be a political headcount exercise where we want to know which tribe has which numbers, where are the numbers concentrated, so that we can now allocate resources for our campaigns. We know where to concentrate during our campaigns. That is my general view. But the view constitution because, says every 10 because, years we have an exercise. Yes, the constitution says that every 10, year, 10 years we need to have a census. And remember, right now we are... How many years to uh, to election? About two and a half years before the elections. Let's not let's not lie to each other. This is a political headcount to know where are the votes so that we can concentrate our efforts there. Because I say that the intended purpose of census is to enable for planning and resource allocation. Yes. However, when you look at the kind of questions they ask you, you wonder what kind of planning. What kind of decisions are going to be made out of this kind of information? Have you I been was counted, counted because today. the questions I was are, counted are, today. The questions are okay. okay. I was counted today and I was being asked, you know, the, I, one of the questions I expected to be asked, because if this is for planning purposes and for resource allocation purposes, I expected to be asked, what are some of which, which services, which government services do I have difficulties accessing? Because the whole idea behind uh, census is that we want to know yeah. how many people are in a certain constituency or how many people are in a certain county so that when we are planning for resource allocation, amongst other factors that we shall consider, we will consider that this constituency has 20,000 people and therefore when we are allocating bursaries, we know that we give them this number of bursaries. But now you see my problem is that if the number of people is the only basis upon which is one of the main bases upon which yes, we are going to be planning one, forgetting yeah. that um some the critical questions that should be asked is that okay we've come to west pokot what are some of the concerns you have maybe the biggest concern that west pokot has is access to water they don't even have agriculture soil to be able to farm so that they can produce they can okay. produce food so when you're asking somebody from trukana when was the last time they accessed their computer because that is what i was asked uh, where, do you have a, a laptop a when was the last time <laughs> do i have horses yes. do i have do i have, do was I that have a question you i was asked do i have livestock okay you it you, was actually on the list you okay. you are, you are we, we have to consider on the cartoon on the so yes. for me yes. so for me my my worry is my worry is that the, the purpose of this census is supposed to be planning but the questions that have been don't designed support that do not support, support the that. ideology behind planning because okay. at the end of the day when you look at this the biggest question should have been what are the services that i for instance have difficulty accessing i will okay. tell you that maybe my road the, the roads are poor so if i'm a farmer i'm unable to transport my goods in time and that that means incurring a bigger cost that means making loss so that now later on you start thinking okay fine so we probably need feeder roads into this particular constituency. I don't okay. think that okay. is what and, census, and, the questions and, that you've been in, in, in No, but that's what she would have this wished. Is, this is what I wanted to say. Because census is about and counting and the people, knowing the numbers that you have yes. in particular okay. places. And, 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 and in line with this cartoon, let me just finish much more. And in line with this cartoon, when I'm saying, when they're saying we've been rigged out of the census, that's why I kept saying at my starting statement, I said that this for me is a political headcount. Okay, political headcount. Well, for me, first of all, we have technology. If you want to do a political headcount, it is so easy today with GPRS. And uh, today, if we want to know, Ken, if your home has a toilet, it is clear. You will just click. And it brings until how you've painted and everything. So first of all, let us not go into uh, the issue of uh, uh, it is um, a political headcount, because our constitution says we will be counted. And it is, glob it is a global uh, way of doing census. And to, at this time round, I think the government tried its best to uh, look at the tool of the UN and use it just to get to know how is Kenya moving also. Because you're not going to share, this is information you're going to share globally also on your SDGs, mm. how you are. And therefore, the questions are very critical. And for me, if you're being asked about livestock, there's a purpose. Because in the end of the day, when they analyze the whole data and now sector it into different sectors, you'll realize uh, at what point uh, in terms of our livelihoods, are we really uh, a country of middle income or are people so poor and yet we assume 
we are already a middle income country. Okay. What is the GDP that we can say a uh, percentage of uh, Kenyans are living? Are they below a dollar or they have moved? So all those questions in the end they will count. have to sense. bring a <coughs> planning process. Okay. In the end, I know for us po uh, politicians, fine, we we'll want to say it's a head count, we we'll want to say it is good for sharing revenue. Mm. But I know there are questions where you are asked, how many children do you have? You see even the ones who have passed on and at yeah. what level? And uh, can, so that you deal with the mortality ah. rate and ask yourself, yeah. why is it in this region? It's higher than the uh, other It's region. higher than the okay. other region. Can so I, think, I think to Time answer, for closing okay. remarks. Yeah, just, no, this is not my closing remark. Okay, Please do it together with your closing okay, remarks because I, I have it. to let you go. It's okay, midnight. I think the way we should cure what her concerns oh, is. Yes. Remember that census comes after every 10 years. Yes. Okay? And remember... Uh, delimitation of boundaries of our constituencies also must come after census, but within 8 to 12 years. So I think the way we must cure this, so that we don't tie census too much to, to, politics to politics and too much yes. to delimitation of constituencies, we do is it. that we still, if we have consensus today, the last delimitation that we had was in 20, was it 2010? 2010. So now we still have, we, we, the, after 12 years, we have up to 2024, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. So what we should do, we should not actually do boundaries review next year or before this uh, election of 2022 and do it probably six months after the next election. If you do that, people will demystify and not really try to, to transport people from here to there because we must beef, beef our, our constituencies because after the census well, the, there'll be some yeah. that will be deleted, deleted and there will some you know we we have to delink it from that okay. and that is the way we can cure it but i want to say this as my closing, closing remark. remarks and as one I minute say it, Rosella says I know, one minute I'm i know i've drunk a lot but a lot of water but i want to say this very clearly that's why i'm sitting up i want to thank these two gentlemen i want to thank the President, Uru Kenyatta, and I want to thank the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga for one reason, for bringing an atmosphere, a peaceful atmosphere where, where things can happen. Because of what they did, this handshake, we are able to begin to see the fight of corruption actually coming up. Yeah. Before, what you'd see is Honorable Raila would be pointing out the corrupt deeds and what the Jubilee of Uhuru would be doing would be so defensive and we would ma make no headways. But today, that atmosphere has allowed us to actually see whether we are not achieving, whether we've not seen it to the end, but to see cases where people are being held to account and being brought to book. And okay. I think that's great. So I want to thank these two guys. You thank <laughs> <laughs> One minute, Rip. Yes. One minute. Um, I think for me, the greatest concern for me is that um, the issues affecting women, children, and persons with disability are issues that will forever continue um, coming up on the you know center stage if we don't have effective leadership to push and champion for the same. So mine would be to urge uh, women leaders, current women leaders, to be able to take it upon themselves that beyond political formations, beyond trending political energies, like right now what is currently trending is the handshake, beyond political alignments, because we have seen in the past how our politics plays. One minute there is a handshake. I'm not, I'm not trying to prophesy doom of a handshake, but I'm just saying we've seen how politics has played in the past. One minute we are together, we are unified. When the rubber hit, the road hits the rubber, or is it the road? I don't know. The rubber hits the nail. Whichever it the is. The nail hits okay. the road. <laughs> yes, when, when one of those things happen, whichever the first that the shall happen. Hits the road. When the rubber hits the road, uh, when, and then these political formations uh, disintegrate, what becomes of the women agenda? Mine is to urge women leaders that over and above embrace, over and above in Wamama and any other political formations around women that shall come up, that women would be able to unite re irris irrespective of their political um, divide, inclinations yeah. and divide and champion for the agenda of women, children and persons with disabilities. I also insist on the need to have reforms within the political, uh, especially the party politics system in the country, to enable it to reduce the barriers that women have for entry to politics. Because the moment we reduce these barriers to enter politics, and the moment we reduce all these uh, hurdles that women have to go through, then we would not even be talking about affirmative action in itself. Okay. We as women will even come up and say, you know what, we think we are capable, but mm. as up, up until, for as long as we still have these barriers, we will still There's need that problem. push. Okay. And, and even as we are talking about- One minute capacity, is gone. Even as we are talking about, it's, it's almost three minutes. No, no, no. You, yes. I think I think you are you are. Please, let me just let me just finish. Yes, we need to capacity build the women that get into leadership.
relationship so that they understand their roles and they understand how best to execute these roles. Because I feel like most of these women representatives, for, for example, stand at a very good position to be able to seek donor funding without necessarily relying on GAF to solve some of the issues that affect, you know, children on the streets, mothers who are giving birth and are unable to, you know, girls who are outside there and do not have employment opportunities. They can lobby for funds, but when they don't have the capacity, it becomes hard to be able to execute their mandate. So build the capacity of the women and also okay. capacity build the society to understand that a woman can also become a leader. Oh, great. Well, in, in seven minutes. It in yes. well, <laughs> that was five minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. She I have no idea. Okay. Okay. On but, I, but, I, but I appreciate you. <laughs> and I think I, missed, uh, I mistook you for with, my uh, friend, Wilkista. Wilkista Duma. Yes, oh, okay. Wilkista, uh, we love her. So yes, and I do not attend embrace. any embrace. And as embrace. Yeah, you can now welcome. We you. embrace young women. You can welcome. And I know Wilkista at that time said, uh, no. Is that your not, closing uh, remark? Uh, not, I'm not closing. No, I'm just trying to clarify. She's clarifying that I was not at the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But anyway, my closing remarks is this. As a country, I think some of why we are facing a lot of challenges, and I think that is what the president has been crying about in terms of reminding us every day that, look, as a country, if we continue politicizing everything that just comes, we, you just want to speak about politics. We are going to lose a lot. And I want to say to Kenya, you look today at Rwanda, which is a small country, but look at how they're doing so well in macadamia. While we are doing politics in our macadamia, they've already had an industry they're exporting. While we are doing so bad in many other issues, technology, we are the best, but look, they've already taken the hub, they're already building. Can we change and look at, the president has been so consistent for the last five months. Can we leave politics and do development and unite ourselves together? And that is why embrace with our messaging, it will be, we want to see development, we want to see that unity that brings development, and we are going to deal and support the president with corruption, because I think that is the most unfortunate thing that happened in our country. And for us as Embrace, we are saying, the judiciary, please change our country's uh, image, because okay. if in the US we can be told our culture is a norm of corruption, because of how we dealt with the cases of drug barons, then it means it is time judiciary should to change that re-image so that when I walk with my passport and in could. any this or out of this country to the US or the UK, I am received knowing my president is fighting corruption. Ken, Great. You know, you've been reading a lot of those tweets and somebody has just sent me an SMS about you, so I have to read You it. can't read a tweet. <laughs> no, this is my no, show. No, 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 this is my show. You can't, you can't just, read just a listen, tweet. Just listen, just listen, just <laughs> listen. Uh, that guy mic? really looks cute. Even better when he's smiling. <laughs> Oh, so my wife is watching oh, oh, my God. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her. I was worried. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I was also <laughs> worried. I didn't know she's your woman. Okay. Don't I'm smile. not going to look. Don't All smile. Right. Don't smile. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. Let's do the final I part hope, of the show. I hope Let's do, we did not go Kenya. No, no, no. no. It is I a good show. I was sure that they will appreciate it. They will. As they much will. As we they will. We are trending the tops. Divide. We are trending tops. So let's do the final part of the show. And we have heard this, and we definitely know that women have always stood for what they believe in and uh, one of the women who has done this she was even christian the iron lady of kirinyaga and uh, this is uh, the lady i'm talking about is martha karua she's the epitome of the strength of a woman and on the 19th of may 1997 she did the unthinkable look at that headline okay. she walked out of a protest or in protest at yes. a political rally yes. just when retired President Moy began speaking. Yes. Her reason was that she, she was not recognized yes. and yes. given a chance to welcome the and president in, the, in her backyard. Yeah. <laughs> she claimed <laughs> it was not only undermining her but also disrespecting the people of Gishugu. Yes. Aside from walking away from the presidential function, Karua also walked away from a government appointed job. Yes. She became the fourth cabinet minister yes. to resign on their own volition or accord during former President Moy and President Kibaki's government. Others were Kenneth Matiba, Simon Nyechai, Simeon Nyechai and John Kuwait, all who resigned during Moy's rules. Now let me give you the reasons why she resigned. Mm -hmm. She was unhappy that her advice on judicial and other changes 
had been rejected by President Kenyatta. She, she was then the Justice Kibaki. and Constitutional uh, Kibaki, sorry. Yes. She was then the Justice and Constitutional Affairs yes. Minister. And before she bowed out, five judges had been sworn in without her knowledge. Yes. And she had also been involved in a war of words with Chief Justice then Ivan Gisheru, who she accused of blocking reforms in the judiciary. A good place to end. She was given a hole tonight. to dig, and so. her hands were tied. She couldn't work as, yes. as the justice. I mean, thank you, ladies. Sometimes you <laughs> want to make sure we are ready. So we are giving them the opportunity to perform. That yes. we will always. Uh, <laughs>